I have the dirtiest hair right now, so let that not distract you because I just did my makeup and a lot of times I push a whole bunch of product into my hair. I haven't had a chance to really clean myself before this video, so let that not distract you from what I have to say because I think you're going to appreciate the effort I put in to try to give you the lowdown. I'm doing this video on the fly. I just wanted to get it out because so many of you have asked to follow my journey, so I felt an obligation to record this journey for you. Right off the bat, I just have to say some things. I do not, I am not, and I do not talk about drama. I'm not a drama channel. This video is just my journey, my opinion. You don't have to believe any of these things. You don't have to follow my lead whatsoever. But there are some things, like I said in my last video, that I do not agree with. So I'm back today and I'm trying to stay calm and level-headed and kind of speak about my experience. But there's a lot of things getting in the way of that. And that is that I've listened to yet another video from the people who originally came out bashing Tati, saying they hated her, saying they don't like her. So I wanted to address this because I did a lot of real research. I spent a lot of time compiling all of the things that I do want to discuss in this video, but the arguments that I heard in this newest video blew me away because they are beyond ridiculous. He is talking about all kinds of things from the bottle to the pictures that other people have submitted to Tati to her simply retweeting things that are positive about her company. And that's the reason they're retracting their apology into Scientology and talking about how it's the death of people and nothing that they're saying has anything or any bearing on whether certain people are going to have positive results or negative results. In this video, I'm talking about my personal results and what I found, things that have frightened me, things that have amused me, things that have intrigued me. But I'm just gonna say this, I'm sorry it has to be said, the individuals that are saying these hateful things about how these vitamins can't help your health and that they're trying to help people be healthy, both of the individuals I would not consider healthy, in my opinion. I'm not a doctor, I am not, well versed in people's body mass index, but they're clearly both not the healthiest people in the world. So that being said, I just find it very ironic that they seem to have these strong opinions about health when they're not even doing that in their own lives. So I'm sorry if that offends anyone, but they've offended me and they've offended Tati and they've made this way bigger of a shitstorm than probably anyone could have imagined, especially with their teeter-tottering back and forth between apologizing to Tati then erasing the video. If you guys want to talk in the comments, I really do encourage that. I don't want a lot of hatred, but if you have opinions or you're taking them or you've had experience with any of this stuff or you're a doctor or a chemist or just someone that's interested, please feel free to have discussions in the comments. I definitely encourage that. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna talk about in this video and then we're gonna jump right into it. It might be a little long and drawn out, but I, I assure you it is interesting and it is things that I really do think the public should know. And the people that are here watching this are people that have wanted to follow my journey, who are interested in following my journey, and I'm glad you're here. Let's get into it. This is gonna be a detailed video. I went above and beyond, I think, to really find out as much as I could about Haley Beauty. And I don't know if other people are doing the same type of research. I've reached out to a couple of doctors, my pharmacist, I've done independent research, and I've also been trying the actual vitamins. I'm on day eight right now. So I figured I would give you my seven day update. I've been journaling everything and keeping track of everything I've been doing. And then also I have some before and afters to show you as well. And I just want you to know what I'm gonna be discussing in this video. So I'm gonna be talking about the doctors and what they said. I'm gonna be talking about my pharmacist. I'm going to be telling you about my experience and showing you my experience taking these pills because they are large. And like I explained, I don't take pills. So that's a little bit funny. And I'll show you a technique that I use that was developed, I guess, by Harvard. That sounds so silly. But then I wanna talk about my research that I've done, what I've learned from this experience, and also my results after the seven days. So that's what we're gonna be discussing in this video. I hope you do like this. I put a lot of effort into it. I wasn't sure I was going to do a video like this, but after I got, I don't know, 10,000 plus views on the other video, I felt I had an obligation to come back on. I don't usually do these type of videos, but I have to say, research is something that I love to do. And personally speaking, I found out about some things that I did not know, and I think that they are very great to understand. Learning about how vitamins are made, what the process is, what's in them, the differences between different vitamin companies, I think all of that 
is really important. And then also whether or not I personally think they're right for me and so on and so forth. And they're gonna be different for everyone. As a matter of fact, I just watched a video from Tati the other day talking about this foundation that I actually have on today. And you know, it's not the best, it's not the most perfect foundation, but the funny thing was I've been kind of raving about it because there are things I do like about it. And I saw that her video said fail on it and she was reviewing the same product. So you just really don't know and everyone has a different body. And at the end of the day, I think that that's sort of the bottom line with anything. It's going to be how you personally feel and how you personally see results in your own life, no matter what it is, no matter if it's sleeping five hours or seven hours or using this kind of foundation for your skin or that kind or taking a vitamin. But I digress, here we go. This is my journey of taking Halo Beauty for the past week. I'm gonna be having you follow along with me on the computer to show you my research and how I found these things out. I will also be linking all of these links below in the description box so that you can go find out more information for anything that piques your interest. So the first thing I did before taking the vitamins is I consulted with two doctors. I couldn't go to my own doctor because it was too far. I go to a doctor that's about an hour away because I don't have many health problems so I don't go to the doctor frequently. That being said, I checked with two doctors. One is a, hold on, I wanna get the exact name. She's a chiropractic physician and acupuncturist for the last 12 years. And the other one is pretty much an internal medicine doctor. She has a degree in psychopharmacology and she's very well versed. So I asked both of these doctors what they thought about the product by just giving them a screenshot of the back of the bottle and I will tell you what both of them said. I think that the fact that one of them's in chiropractic medicine and a little bit more holistic, she had a different viewpoint, but both said that they were safe enough for me to take and try out. So there wasn't any interactions or anything like that because I do take medicine, which I'm going to talk about a little bit in this video because I found out something pretty interesting about me, Halo Beauty, and my medication. So that coming in a second. So the internal medicine doctor said, I looked at the ingredients and most are antioxidants. Some have side effects, the saw palmetto, but nothing major. You shouldn't take saw palmetto while breastfeeding, but I don't think 160 milligrams is enough to affect estrogen birth control. Theoretically, it's possible, but there are no case reports of women getting pregnant on birth control because of saw palmetto, but it could be that those just were not reported. It should not affect those on progestin, progestin, I don't know how to say things, birth control. So that was the first, and she also cleared me that I could take them without any problems because like she said, most are antioxidants and so on and so forth. The other doctor on the other hand had something a little bit different to say, even though she said, every one of those ingredients are excellent. You have to tell me the name of the product so I can research it and tell you if they're getting them from a quality place, which was kind of where I went with my research next. She says it really comes down to the facility and where they actually get their ingredients. And that's really the most important part because these ingredients are not bad. They're actually excellent, like she said. However, it really depends upon where they are sourcing the materials that they're providing to the actual factory that's compiling them into a capsule. So I learned all about that process. I feel like I became an expert in vitamin creation, but we'll get into that in a second. She wanted to see if they were a certified facility. I think she said GMP. I'll have to look that up again. I know we're gonna go through that on the computer and where it's being manufactured and whether they've gone through the proper licenses, but any kind of vitamin is not FDA approved and so on and so forth. We already kind of know that. Her main thing was she said that she wouldn't necessarily feel 100% safe taking them unless they were organic and non-GMO. I learned about both and I wanna tell you what I found about both organic, non-organic, GMO and non-GMO and you can make your own opinions about whether or not you believe that these vitamins or any vitamins, because there's a lot of different vitamins that are not organic and might contain GMOs are healthy for you and safe for you. And she said, even though it says they're vegan, it doesn't say that they're not non-GMO or that they're organic. It doesn't say where she is getting the ingredients, and yes, it might be made in the United States, but it could be ingredients from China. Her idea is absolutely amazing, and the actual type of ingredients that she has in there are great if they are organic and non-GMO, and if we can't verify where they're coming from, then, you know, that's, 
That's the whole crux of this argument is that there are amazing ingredients, but where are you getting them from? So I did a little bit of research because I was kind of confused about what a GMO is, what organic versus non-organic ingredients are, why it even matters, I don't really understand it. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna show you where I found all this stuff and you can look it up as well in the description box. So the next thing I did is I checked with my pharmacist. The reason I checked with my pharmacist is because I am on an anti-seizure medication. We can get into that for another day. I do have a pre-existing condition and I am on an anti-seizure medication. So I wanted to make sure that none of these ingredients were going to interact with my medication and he said that I was just fine taking these. So that I checked off my list. Now we're gonna watch a clip of me actually taking the pills, which I think is a little bit funny, and then my method for actually being able to swallow very large pills because I am a baby. And if I can swallow these pills, then you can too, regardless of how big they are. Okay, so today is day one. I'm already getting scared because I am a terrible pill taker. And yes, we're gonna show you the Harvard way to take pills, but I'm still terrified because I these are pretty big. They're the biggest ones that I've pretty much taken. Ever. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it, and Scott's gonna record me, right, babe? Okay, yeah. But what happens if you start choking? Should I still record? Yeah, of course. It'll get us a lot of views. So the difference is that when you, when people usually take pills, I've seen this so many times, they lean their neck back, and that actually what constricts it from going down, babe? Um. Yeah. So in this case. <laughs> You sure. your neck this way. Um, I do you have to point out that you, you can only use that technique with oh, the with capsules. capsules. Oh my god, I'm already gagging. I can't do this. Dex is worried about you. I know. He should be. My gag reflex is triggered right now, and it's... it's you want me to show you how it's done? I'm, th I'm about to throw up. You want me to show you how it's done? No, no. I'll be happy to take those. Get my luscious locks back. I can't do Just this. kidding, I, I haven't lost them. This. What I normally do is I take the water first, I put a whole bunch of water in my mouth. So you watch me and then I tilt my head down at the same time I slurp this up. Can you not use the word slurp? <laughs> Alright, whatever. Here we go. Oh my god, it was so easy. Yep. <laughs> it was so it was so easy. I didn't even feel it, but I did taste it. Oh my God, how is it so easy? So what is a GMO? It's a genetically modified organism. So it's an animal or a plant whose genes have been modified by a scientist, essentially, to either keep them from dying in the field or to create more of a crop so that we won't go hungry. That's pretty much the extent of it. However, um, there's been a lot of studies done, and in this one study that I'm reading here from the Pew Research Center, it shows that nine out of 10 scientists from the American Association for the Advancement of Science say GMOs are generally safe to eat, but then the general public oftentimes thinks that you shouldn't eat them and that they're terrible and they give you allergies and they can give you all kinds of health problems or cancer. And you can read all about this process in this article. It's a very good article. It tells you that genes and plants Genes of plants and organisms are changing all of the time. They're mutating and those genes determine how tall the crop is and how healthy the crop is. So it exists in nature, but then we are taking the genes and manipulating them so that we have the outcome that we desire. It has saved papaya plants from becoming extinct. It has enabled us to make more crops when we don't have them. So there are a lot of benefits to genetically modified organisms. The only other thing I want to point out, and you can argue this and everything, I'm not looking for a debate, I'm just telling you what I have researched and you are free to do the research on your own and come to your own conclusions. This is just what I found through the information that was available to me on the internet and is available to you as well. But the bottom line is, even if you hate GMOs, you can't avoid them. Because if you're a normal everyday person eating from the grocery store, whether it be Publix if you live in the South, or Vons if you live here in California, or any kind of supermarket, maybe if you go to Whole Foods you have a little bit of a better chance of getting non-GMO food because they do have a section. But regardless, if you're eating cereals or any processed foods or probably any fast food restaurants or even restaurants in general, you're going to run into eating foods with GMOs. So. If you're worried about it, I don't know. You might not want to live in this country or this planet because even China has introduced allowing GMOs to be in their crops. 
And then of course, sometimes GMOs are used to put more vitamins into certain crops. There are a lot of things that don't have as many vitamins and then we bulk them up and make them even better for consumption. So there's a lot of benefits to GMOs, but again, it's your personal perspective and after you read and learn about it, you can make a personal decision. I've decided at this point that I can't worry myself and you might think I'm just being careless or that I don't care about my body or my health, but that's just, it can't be farther from the truth. I'm obviously doing all this research for a reason, not just to tell you, but there are things you're gonna find out that I found out that are frightening to me. And so just bear with me when I say that GMOs are not the most frightening thing that I found doing my research. GMOs were one of the least of my worries after reading that there's really no way to avoid them. So I'm not gonna get up in arms about whether Tati's vitamins are non-GMO or not. I'm moving on to the next thing. The only other thing is that China, Australia, and European Union require the GMO foods to be labeled, but the US doesn't. So that's just something to consider and think about. And then they just list some foods, edamame, papayas from Hawaii, summer squash, Sweet corn and zucchini are among GMO foods. Then we get into this debate about synthetic or organic. I knew nothing about synthetic vitamins, organic whole food vitamins. I just have no idea what any of this stuff is and that's why I say I became almost an expert in all this because I had to do so much research and understand and wrap my brain around the difference between organic and non-organic and synthetic vitamins and non-synthetic vitamins and vitamins from whole food sources and all this stuff. So what I've gathered is obviously synthetic vitamins are created in a laboratory. They're man-made and nine times out of 10, most vitamins on the market, just so you know, are not organic. There are some vitamins at Whole Foods and I looked through a huge list of them where they're in the organic section and they've gone through a ton of um, studies and they've had to give all of their information to, I guess, a laboratory with Whole Foods and they pretty much deserve that label as either non-GMO or organic or both. So I don't think Tati's vitamins are gonna fall into any of those categories because I don't think at this point that she's trying to be in major retailers, but that's a story for another day. All along, I had no idea that my own fiance has been taking natural vitamins from food sources this entire time and he does not make any mention of this because I don't pay attention to what other people are putting in their bodies. I really just don't. It's my responsibility to take care of my body, but I really should care about what my family is ingesting and we're gonna get to why that frightened me later in this video because I did find out something about sugar bear hair and other vitamins that has me really upset and I'm gonna talk about that. But Scott takes a form of vitamins which I'm gonna put up on the screen. The thing with these vitamins is they need to be refrigerated or frozen and he puts them in smoothies because these are made from natural food ingredients and they're not synthetic vitamins, they perish, they're made from foods and they're amazingly healthy for you. So will I decide to change to more of a natural vitamin? If I have the choice, I probably will, but I'm gonna get into everything and that's your personal choice. Whether you wanna pop a synthetic pill or you wanna get it from foods or you wanna take a supplement that's food-based, again, maybe it's easier for you to take a synthetic vitamin. I know I'm in a rush in the morning. That is no reason to disregard your health, but a lot of times I don't have time to make a giant smoothie, put everything in it, and sometimes I think that's a lot of calories. So again, it's to each their own. If you're worried about calories or sugar or things like that, smoothies might not be the best thing for you to be eating every day. So you have to just weigh the pros and cons for your particular circumstances. And then there's price. A lot of times organic vitamins and food-based vitamins or natural vitamins are more expensive. If you think Tati's vitamins are expensive, a lot of these vitamins are even more expensive and you have to do more prep time and things like that. So again, these are just things to consider. I've also been reading this and you can read for yourself that synthetic and natural are both okay for you. So you're, you're going to get the benefits. It doesn't mean that the synthetic vitamins don't have vitamins in them. If that makes sense. The only thing you do want to look out for, and we're going to talk about why this is a problem in some of the mainstream vitamins, is the dosage. You don't want to be taking larger dosages than what your body needs. So that's something to be careful about. And you're going to find out that a lot of vitamin companies are giving you more than you bargained for. Then I thought it was interesting. I just wanted to know how easy it would be to start your own supplement company. Because if Tati did it, what did she do? How did she know how to start it? When I started my cell phone case company, I basically Googled how to start a cell phone case company. So I did the same thing. And as you can see here, it says 10 steps of how to start your own supplement company successfully, which I thought was really interesting. One of the lines I really liked was many people interested in starting a supplement company have good ideas, but it takes more than just a good idea to build a profitable business. Of course, of course you want your business to be profitable. Anyone getting down on Tati for wanting to make money, that's a really ridiculous 
argument because of course I want to make money too with my business and who doesn't want to make money in general? You know, if you have a choice to either be profitable or not, I think most of us would feel that we should be profitable in any business venture that we take. So if you put in the hard work, it says, you know, you're able to start your own company. Identify a valuable in-demand product. So of course, beauty and skincare and nails and health, that's a very big industry. So of course, that's a very in-demand product that she has come out with that's going to promote your thick and luxurious hair growth, minimizing the fine lines and wrinkles, everything that women care about, because let's face it, we want to stay beautiful for as long as we possibly can. And of course, she already has the ability to identify and define her market because her market are going to be people that already watch her channel and she has that following. So for her, she can pretty much check off the first two right off the bat. She knows who her target audience is and she knows her target customers and she knows that her product can meet the needs of these specific customers because they're there to learn about beauty products and in turn they probably want to look good so this vitamin probably works right into what they would want and the demand of a product and of course then it tells you to check out the competition we all want to know who are we competing with i happen to type in hair and beauty vitamins and we'll get to that in just a moment to see who her competitors really are and what she can do differently to differentiate herself from the competition and i think that's where her ingredient ceramide rx comes in because she has to have something in her vitamins that set her apart just like it's saying in this article if you want to go with reducing the price that's one thing another thing could be the way you market your product and she's obviously marketing hers more on youtube and to her fans and her subscribers and just like Sugar Bear Hair, you know, they have a marketing strategy which is using influencers and paying them a lot of money to endorse their product. But the last thing says, your value claims. What do your competitors say their product can do? What disclaimers do they include on the label? Once you have analyzed each of these issues, it's time to find ways to distinguish yourself from other brands. Then it says, finally, with regard to claims, you can boost the appeal of your products by making claims on your label that cannot be found on labels of similar products. So if you do look, her label says promotes thick and luxurious hair growth, minimizes fine lines and wrinkles, supports collagen and keratin production, promotes strong and healthy nails with anti-grave fighting enzymes. I think that she makes these claims that are a little bit different than other vitamins. I took a look at some of the labels of other ones, Sugar Bear Hair, some of the other vitamins that we are about to look at. And again, she is trying to set herself apart with those claims. Another example they give is you can be able to get a certification that competitors don't have or you can remove a disclaimer or unwanted ingredient that most of your competitors do include. I remember Tati talking about some of that, that her product doesn't include so-and-so and doesn't include this or that. I think that those are claims that she is making so that she can differentiate herself. Maybe you are looking for a vegan pill. A lot of people are these days, so that sets her apart. You know, Sugar Bear Hair claims that they're vegetarian, but if you want to go completely vegan with a pill, then she sets herself apart by being able to take out ingredients that people don't want. Then I found this whole section on the best supplement manufacturer qualifications. And this is where there's a gray line between what Tati's doing and maybe some other brands that you've heard of or seen in stores. They have to pick a manufacturer. So who is actually sourcing your vitamins? Where are they coming from? How are you getting them to that facility that you say is FDA approved in order to combine them compound them and put them into a capsule because the laboratory can be 100% FDA approved. Their guidelines could be strict and everything, but where are the ingredients coming from? That's where we, that's the question that I think a lot of people have and they're, they're asking. And I guess the argument is that Tati is not being 100% transparent. There are some companies that will say, this is the manufacturer. And I found that you're actually able to look this up. So it says that you want to make sure that the manufacturer is verified by the NPA or the NSF. There's regulations set forth by the GMP, which we talked about earlier, that the chiropractic physician talked about. There is a way to find that out. So this is if someone's trying to create a supplement. This is what they would have to go through to make sure that their supplement is 100% safe or as safe as it can be and that they have the right certifications 
and that's really, really important. It says they have to have a manufacturing certification, a storage and distribution certification, and a packaging certification. So it would be nice to know who the manufacturer is so that we can look for ourselves and find out is this a reputable manufacturer? Is it really a clean place? Does it really have quality products and where are they being sourced from? So there is a way to check on this. There is the NPA, it's a Natural Products Association. GMP certified companies, updated October 2017. Obviously Tati wouldn't be on here because it was updated in October 2017, so it's not really a good argument. Maybe if this gets updated or maybe if you can write them, you'll find out, but there's a long list of companies on here. Then I went to the NSF. This is the product and service listing. I believe that they updated this just on March 20th, so you're able to see that Tati's brand is not on here. However, some of these companies, and you might notice them, for example, Advocare, I've seen that in stores before, Duterra, totally, Herbalife, Herbalife, whatever it's called, that's on there. So they can always be manufactured under a different name. Let's say Halo Beauty is being manufactured by ABC Manufacturing Company. Then ABC Manufacturing Company would be on this list as NSF certified. Do you see how this works? So without knowing who the manufacturer is, and I don't know if that's readily available from other vitamins. I looked on Sugar Bear Hair, they didn't say anything. I looked at some of these other vitamins, it didn't list their manufacturer. So I don't know how you find that information out. But I will say that the doctor said that companies are usually proud of this. So it's something that they usually want the public to be able to find. So if you are a maybe bigger vitamin brand, you might say being manufactured by ABC because maybe ABC is an amazing manufacturer and maybe you have the money and the clout and everything else. Because I did find there was one vitamin company and I wanna get into the drama in one second. There was a vitamin company found at GNC called Vitafusion. And I looked up the brand and it said that it was manufactured for a Church and Dwight company. I looked up Church and Dwight and you could see that they have a lot of brands that you've heard of, Arm & Hammer, Origel, Trojan, OxyClean, Batiste. So right off the bat, they're giving you the information, they're showing you their brand. And I think that that's very reputable and I give them a lot of credit for doing that. But again, they are established, they've been on the market for a long time. So those I think are the main concerns with taking a vitamin. Now let me get into the drama because this is what I really wanted to talk about and it has nothing to do with Tati, so to speak, but I just wanted you to know what I found out about Sugar Bear Hair because I will not be giving Sugar Bear Hair to my daughter ever again and I will not be taking Sugar Bear Hair and I've been partners with them, so to speak, and I can't justify taking them anymore after what I read. I don't know if anything's changed from the time that this article was posted, but of course I went on to Sugar Bear Hair's website. It's bright and colorful and trendy and there's all these celebrities endorsing the product. So it's enticing and that's what's separating them from other vitamins on the marketplace. Plus they're really cute. Who doesn't think little blue bears are really cute? Well, I found an article called Sugar Bear Hair Owner Nicole Knightley Dumps Five Million Above the Sunset Strip, meaning she purchased a $5 million home here in Los Angeles. This is the person who founded Sugar Bear Hair. It was acquired by Dan Morris and Nicole Knightley from Florida. Represent, I'm from South Florida. But here is the interesting thing. We don't know much about Mr. Morris other than he is Miss Knightley's partner in business and beyond, it seems. But young Miss Knightley, who like Mr. Morris is still in her 20s, she first tried to make it as one of those beauty bloggers on YouTube. That didn't pan out. So she switched to more behind the scenes work. She founded a company called Skinny Fox Detox that is one of the new fanged and arguably quite pricey detox and cleanse programs that are all the rage right now. Miss Knightley's detox program is quite popular. It has over 400,000 followers on Instagram after all, but it wasn't until just recently that our girl really hit the jackpot. Within the last couple of years, Miss Knightley released a new product called Sugar Bear Hair. They have tons of models and influencers that endorse their products, even folks like Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, each of whom can easily command 300,000 per endorsement. You might think that spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay celebrities to endorse an overpriced and silly product like blue gummy bear hair vitamins is utterly ridiculous. Why waste the money, right? Wrong. These bears bought a $5 million home. You can read the comments on this article for yourself. There's a lot of interesting little tidbits there I'm not gonna get into. By the way, there are 
things you can read about the results from Labdoor and what they found. That's really educational if you do want to find it and I'll leave everything below like I said. But then an article that really piqued my interest was this lab found out what's actually in the Kardashians' favorite vitamin. Now I like these articles because this lab is putting the vitamin to the test and that's what I want to know. I want to know the facts. I want to know what's in them. So it says that sugar bear hair vitamins promoted on social media by celebrities like Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian make largely inaccurate nutrition claims on their labels according to testing by a lab that analyzes nutritional products. This was really interesting because my daughter, I know they're not supposed to be for children, you guys, but I guess I was ignorant and thought, what's the harm? You know, I'm taking them. She takes them every now and then. And I never thought there was anything wrong with that. But this lab in San Francisco tests and grades dietary supplements and found that the listed quantities of seven of the 11 nutrients listed on the sugar bear hair were incorrect and inaccurate by 20% or more. They also found, and this is the part that really bothered me, relatively high levels of lead compared with other hair supplements tested by the lab. And they say they're committed to a quality product. But the lab tests found that the bears contain 70% more biotin. What did we learn earlier? We learned that mega doses and higher dosage of certain vitamins, antioxidants, etc., are really bad for you. It's containing more than 70% more biotin than claimed on the label and about 75% of the amount of vitamin B5 and B6, which have been associated with hair growth. The gummies also contain about 26 less vitamin E than what the company claims on the label. I don't know if these things have changed, but finding these things are really not cool. Label inaccuracy reflects lack of regulations of a dietary supplement, which is not held to the same strict government standards as pharmaceutical businesses. So you can see right then and there, um, I don't care if a company thinks they're well within certain boundaries and guidelines. No, just no. And don't be inaccurate. If you're inaccurate, how am I going to trust anything else that you're saying? And I know this isn't a debate about whether sugar bear hair is safe, but this is another really big popular vitamin out there that we're all eating or a lot of us are eating and I think that that's pretty scary. So should Tati have this lab test her vitamins? I don't know. I don't know what's right for each person and what they feel is right for their company. I don't know. You don't know the future of Tati's decisions or her company or what she's going to decide to do. Maybe she needed to see how the public would react and then decide, okay, yes, I think it's really smart to disclose these things to the consumers if they are safe, there's nothing to hide kind of thing. And then last but not least, I found this article, The Truth About Hair, Skin, and Nail Supplements. This is the most important part of my video, which is why I wanted to say this and make a point of it before I went into anything else. Can one of these products really make a difference? Get the facts before you spend the money. Here's what's interesting. Um, science says that hair, skin, and nail supplements commonly contain antioxidants such as vitamin A, C, and E, or um, CoQ10, as well as biotin, B-complex vitamin, the minerals, you know, blah, blah, blah. And these supplements are said to be able to give you healthy hair and blah, blah, blah. Here's what I thought was interesting. There is one part of this article. It says that um, deficiencies of these nutrients, though uncommon, may cause a litany of hair and sometimes skin and nail changes over time. For instance, insignificant intake of vitamins A and E can cause rough, scaly skin patches. A deficiency of biotin can cause eczema and hair loss. So are you deficient? Check with your doctor. You may be. I don't know if I am. Should I have checked that? Possibly. But it is saying if you are deficient in these vitamins or maybe not getting enough of them because I am a vegetarian. So sometimes I think maybe I'm not getting enough of them, but I don't know that until I go to a doctor. However, here's the part that I thought was really interesting. What if you're deficient? And this is where it gets interesting. Most people get enough nutrients mentioned above through diet, but in rare cases, a medical problem may cause a deficiency or affect your hair, nails, or skin. People who take antibiotics long-term or use anti-seizure drugs, for instance, are more likely to be biotin deficient. An over or underactive thyroid may cause hair loss and dry strands. Iron deficiency, anemia can lead to brittle, oddly shaped nails. So, so what I learned is um, 
I might be one of those people and that's why I might benefit from this pill. This might actually be a magic pill for someone like me because I do take anti-seizure medication. I'm gonna show you that medication right now and it is a story for another day. I'm not really ready to talk about my story, why I have to take anti-seizure medication, what's wrong with me, but I will tell you that I had a botched lumbar puncture back in 2013 which has caused a litany of problems in my life and I'm on an anti-seizure medication. So that might make me deficient in some of these things that Tati's vitamins can help me produce more of or get in my diet. The thing with vitamins is it has to accumulate in your system, meaning when you take them right away, your body is not going to miraculously change. So I think we need to give it a little more time. But speaking of time, I have been taking the pills for, this was my eighth day. Now, have I noticed anything different? I know you guys have been waiting a long time to hear my thoughts and I know I've seen other videos. So I really do need to give this three weeks to really show you if anything did change. But here are my before and after pictures. I took them in the same lighting. I took them with the same settings on my camera. I'm gonna show you all that because I wanted this to be very detailed and thorough. So today is the 20th. I've been taking the pills for a week now and I just wanted to also show you my camera settings are the same and I'm gonna go ahead and start taking videos of my face. And these are my camera settings again. Just wanna make sure everything's the same. I've noticed some breakouts have cleared up. I mean, nothing major, but I have noticed that. I haven't really noticed much else besides my nails. I took off some of my acrylic nails. I'm gonna show you that right now. And I noticed that they weren't as broken. I don't know what that means, but for me, that's pretty awesome. When I take my fake nails off, I showed you this in my first video, they're usually really broken and disgusting. And I have to say, I'm pretty, I think if there's one thing that I'm a little bit um, surprised and happy about is that my nails, they're definitely not as broken as they usually are, which is pretty surprising, but I'm doing the same thing I always do. And they're definitely not as broken as usual, which is kind of crazy. I just took my nails off just like I did that one day and they're not as broken. I don't want my nails to be as broken. I'm trying to let them grow underneath these. They've never been able to before and I've been wearing acrylics or not, and I've been wearing fake nails for years. So we'll see what the end result is after, you know, I take these for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. I don't know how long this is gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna measure it for you with this janky ass measuring tape. I parted my hair in the middle of my head. I know this is not the most accurate. I don't think I'm gonna have any hair growth right now anyway. So Scott's gonna measure this for me more accurately and we'll go from there. So in my next video, you will see a more accurate representation of the actual length, but I'm just putting this little guy right in the center and I'm gonna be pulling on my hair so that I get as long as the last strand, even though my hair isn't completely straight right now. So I'm gonna go all the way down here to the end of my hair. He's gonna measure it from the back so it's gonna be, okay. So I'm gonna give it that a 27. 27, you guys see that? 27. So I'm gonna give that a 27 inches. That's a long hair. That's a lot of hair. I didn't realize my hair was that long. It's looking ratty right now, so forgive me, but we're gonna get you an accurate count. I don't think it's gonna grow that much in just a week, so bye. Probably my second week we'll have accurate counts and everything for you. But I hope you enjoyed this informative video. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you want me to do any research, try anything. But, but overall, I still feel very positive about taking the vitamins. I'm not afraid to take the vitamins. I'm excited to take them. I am looking forward to any positive results I have. And I will be ready and willing to share them with you. So thank you for being here and stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss the next video I put out about this or other exciting things. I've got a lot of exciting things coming out. I've got some unboxings to do. I've got some products to talk about. I've got some skincare stuff and I've got some challenges. So thank you so very much once again for watching this video. I will see you in my next one. Do you want to stay? Don't you, don't you want to stay? Because I don't want to chase or make you make the same mistake.